Hi everyone, this is the Duke Parenting Podcast. My name is Brian Suleiman. And my name is Linda Ijafo Suleiman. And we have our friends here. Woo! <laughs> I love it. <laughs> See, that's why they're here. Welcome. <laughs> okay, babe, did I tell you this morning when I woke up? You know, I've, I've been, I've not been at home. She has not two, been at home. For two days, two days. She has not been at home. It doesn't matter if she still has two days, two weeks. She has not been at home. <laughs> I went to shoot. I went. So that's why I shouted, so that in case I'm away. She has not been at home. I went to shoot and in those two days, Ibrahim and... Kion had missed me like crazy. Somebody did not sleep. <laughs> Listen, this is this is a, this is an That's exaggeration not the story. of the facts. The story is so. This morning, before we snuck out of the house, mm. I woke up and I went to why you were on the throne. Put my bi- wow wow. <laughs> so wow. I went Welcome to me. I went to see Kion and Kion saw me. I was like, Mama, you're back. That hug and gave me kisses and all that. Then he was playing. A game on his tab. Kion has downloaded all the oh games in goodness, this world like, on his tab. He does wow. not have space anymore on that tab. Anyway, Thankfully, we did not link any of our um, Google accounts to his tab. Otherwise, it's every day we're getting debit alerts for for, <laughs> for downloads or for for extra life or whatever it uh, is. Because that guy just you just say, when he watches, you know how they're, they're in game ads. And then he's playing a game. Sorry, my baby. Mm-hmm. And then an ad pops up and he watches the ad and he likes the game. He's like, I'm going to download it. Mm-hmm. And then he clicks download and then he goes to go and play that game. So he has so many. I don't know them are about numbers. They're practically all about no, but puzzles, this one, numbers. This one was Sunny Bunnies. Oh, okay. So he has a Sunny Bunnies thing that looks like Candy Crush that you just have to be busting and be coming down. So yeah, it's a new, it's not the number one. I'm so proud that he has... He has evolved. I mean, I actually kind of like the fact that, you know, he's so crazy about numbers. But carry on, carry yeah. on. Mm-hmm. So while we're there, and I was so you're playing this about game. about how much he missed you. Uh, no, that's not the gist. The oh, gist this the gist. Is, this, this is so funny. Okay. So while we're there and we're playing this game, then I know I, we had to go and take our bath and mm-hmm. get ready to start coming to for the podcast, to record this podcast. His nanny now comes and I am, I'd already told her downstairs that I want to go and take him at my bath. And I know Keon hasn't seen me for two days. He want me to, oh, I want mama to feed me. Mm-hmm. I want mama to give me a bath. I want mama to dress Somebody me. Somebody that can feed himself. Oh, mm. but I want mama to dress me up. I want mama, I want to play with mama. So the nanny came with his bread and tea and he was trying to feed himself and he was doing a fantastic job. Then I say, oh, I was about to get up to go. Say, mama, don't go. Mama, don't go. I'm like, baby, um, mama needs to go and take her bath. He said, no, mama, don't go to work. I said, I'm not going to work. I just want to go and take her bath. Liar. I know, but I wasn't going to work at that moment. (laughs) But, but, but the thing is, so I thought about them like, okay, I'm not going to work at that moment. But the thing I really wanted to go and do, which I didn't want to tell him was I wanted to go and take a poop. I wanted to go and use the toilet. Mm-hmm. So what we tell Kion is, like oh, my dear, something they come out. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Please carry on. <laughs> what we usually tell Kion is, oh, so that we could know where we're going to. And it's like conversations. Like I want to go and take a poo I want to, so that he understands what we are doing. Like mm-hmm. people. So I said, okay, mama wants to go and poo. He now said, Kion wants to help. Oh, yeah. hmm. okay, yeah. carry on. Kion wants to help. I'm like, no. I said, but I need to go. He said, mama, don't go. I said, do you want mama to poo here? He said, no. I said, do I have to go? It will drop out here and it won't be funny. That's not nice. So let me go and poo poo. He said, but dada is pooing. When dada is done, mama poos and mama takes her bath. I said, exactly. So can I go and poo? Kion said, okay. I was about to get up. He said, wait. Then he goes round. And I'm stupid on the floor. And he looks at my bum bum. <laughs> oh my goodness. To see if the poo had fall, fallen out before I go out. Oh poo. my goodness. He now said, Mama, no poo. Go poo. <laughs> <laughs> go, go and poo, go and poo. Hurry up, Mama. I thought I was going to come and tell oh you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I cannot believe how many times the word poo has been said <laughs> in the last two minutes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on this episode of the Do Parenting Podcast. Not the Do Parenting Poocast. Um, <laughs> contrary to what you might feel based on the first two minutes. Um, 
My name is Ibrahim. And my name is Linda Ijofo Suleiman. And we have an interesting three-year-old called Keon. He is quite literally our sunshine. Like yes. He's an amazing child. Um, if you've been with us on the show, um, if you've seen the first season and some of the episodes from this season, you would know that we talk about him a lot. And you probably know more about him than, you know. Yeah. Anyway, but um, today we would like to hear from other people who have interesting scenarios um, and they want us to, and, you know, we just like to find out, um, you know, converse with, between both of us and then everybody else here and decide if, you know, the, the person in question is the A word or not. Um, so, yes, we have a few stories to read. So, um, we have some very interesting um, scenarios and stories. We got them from, uh, mostly from Reddit. And our producer did a bit of a search and she found some interesting things that we haven't, I have a feeling they are setting me up because some of these things are probably going to just be very, to shock me more than it should. But yeah, Didi catches too much fun um, on this show. I think she has more fun than we do. <laughs> but so, um, madam. Yes. Do you want to read Let me one? read the first one. So the topic for all, everything that we're going to read is, Am I the a hole? Oh, oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, so okay. Yeah. Okay. Am I the a hole? Right, yes. A i t a. So this one says a i t a. So if you hear me say a i t a, is am I the a hole? For a i t a for telling my parents that they have one daughter and she is six feet in the ground. All this started when I was twelve years old and my younger sister was ten. Let's call her Abby. Well, Abby started to get sick and no one in the family knew what was going on. I started to. I started to be dropped off at my grandparents as they went to different doctors. I'm not going to I'm not going to go into her illness, but when the doctors figured it out, it was bad. So a lot of time was devoted to my sister. When I was 14, it got worse and I started to be left at my grandparents for longer amounts of time. It started with just staying the weekend and then maybe the whole week. I would bring it up and they would and they told me that they have to focus on Abby. Soon, I was staying there for months. Wow. By the time I was 16, I was basically living there full time. I would maybe see them every other month. If, it texted them, if I texted them about the whole thing, the same response was always sent. We need to focus on Abby right now. I'm 19 now and Abby has passed away from her illness. Her funeral was two weeks ago. Oh, I attended through FaceTime. Wow. Wow. I got a call today from my parents that they wanted to meet up and be a family again. I told them that they abandoned me, the one child for another. I'm not their child anymore. That they only have one daughter and she's six feet under the ground now. I soon hung up. All right. I've been getting text messages, calls, people calling me and ask and that I should understand that they needed to focus on Abby and to suck it up, basically. So am I the A-hole? So, f wow, from 14 to 19. That's five years. They abandoned her for, f for five years. It's tough. It's tough. It's, ah. So I wouldn't necessarily say that she's an asshole, mm. right? I feel like at 14, she's a child. You understand? At 14. At 12. Wait, it started when she was 12. 12. So for, so basically for six years, she felt like she was a, you know, um, she, she wasn't a priority. Um, and at 12, man, that's, that's preteen. That's, it's a very vital, it's really for, a, for, it's a vital stage yeah. in a child's, in a young person's development. So I understand, I understand how she feels. Yeah. I understand. I, I really mean, her sister was really ill and her sister ended up not making it. And must have taken his toll on her parents, but she's their child. I'm sorry, all, but all, I, can't, all, I, can't, all, I can't label her. All kids need attention. Yeah. So I think at the same time they were giving Abby attention, they should have also given her. I attention. mean, obviously they couldn't have given her as enough, much. Yeah, yes, as they were giving, but at least one of them they should. I think if if you and I, God forbid, God forbid are in that situation. 
Okay, let me use my parents for example. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Let okay. me use my yes. parents okay, for cool, example. Cool, that's cool. a like that yeah. we, we are very good example because my brother was born with a hole in the heart, mm-hmm. and he lived with it first for thirteen years before he did his surgery in UPTH Enugu, the first surgery, mm-hmm. and. The same time that he was getting attention, we were all getting the attention as well because we all knew what was wrong with that. So we're like a family, we're involved. Right. So whenever he was being t- rushed to the hospital, we would go and visit. My father or my mom would tell us what was going on. If my mom happened to have to stay over at the hospital to sleep over with him, my dad was at home with us, mm. with the housekeeper. If my dad was in the hospital, my mom was at home with us. <laughs> so they shared all the responsibilities. They told us we were carried along. Then when he turned, when he was now 20 and he had to do another surgery in India, my dad went with him. My mom was at home with us. But by that time, we were all grown up. So we knew what my my brother was going through. We were emotionally around, Mm. not just for my brother, but also for my my mom because she needed it. Mm. But I'm just, at 12? It's tough. At 12? Yeah. And now that she has practically grown up, um, been raised by her grandparents Mm -hmm. and... And she, she basically thinks that she doesn't need her parents because at 19, everybody knows what they wear at 19. 19, I'm like, I'm a big girl now. You can't tell me what to do. Mm-hmm. So at 19, she feels like she's an adult. She is an adult because at 18, she's an adult. Then, legally, yeah, yes. Legally. So, yeah, they messed up big time. So are the parents they are so? So... To be honest, I don't think anybody in this story is an asshole. I just think that wrong choices were made and they just failed to communicate with their child enough. You know, to as you said, you know, they didn't they didn't get her involved. Because if she was involved in the day to day, you know, oh, this was going on, this was happening, you know. She would have been with her sister lot, too. Yeah. Throughout that time. Easier. So I wouldn't say the parents were I just I think the parents just didn't know better. But also let's 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 play devil's advocate here. Maybe the parents were trying to shield her from what their daughter the other daughter was going through. Fair. Emotionally. Maybe they were trying to shield her and say okay we don't want you to see what this girl what your sister is going through so that it doesn't affect yeah. you. So they wanted to protect her as well. I hereby declare that there's no asshole in this story. Sorry. Aha. Uh-huh. Zin disagrees. <laughs> because I think the reason why she was came for, I mean, who she was come for, right? Yeah, it was because the other one had passed. Yeah, she was insensitive to the death of the, because what was worse than that? Okay, so I hear you, but I don't think she was insensitive to, I think she was just over the family already. She had detached so that she could survive. So because she hadn't, she didn't feel like she was part of the family, it in that and at that stage when her sister finally passed away, she would probably just look at it like, oh, someone I know has died. It won't be like my sister has died. But it won't be like she, my parents have lost a child. It would be like, oh, this couple that I know have lost a child. Lost. Hey, but like as a human. Yeah. So like, if someone I know loses someone, I will feel empathy for them. Mm. But I might not grieve. Let's not forget that she attended the funeral via FaceTime. She wasn't why, present. Why, why so one thing that's missing from this story, Ta, one thing that's missing from this story is we do not know the distance between sorry, between her grandparents' place and the city or the state where I don't think they lived in the same city. And we don't city. know why she did not not able to go attend there. so we don't have that context so we, so we cannot make a yeah. judgment based on but that. you remember why the que- what the question is why did people come for her i'm no, i'm no, trying to understand asking, no, why those people exactly called her is, is she an asshole for telling her parents that, that she doesn't she's want not their child mm. and that their only child is dead people are not coming for her for saying that that she's insensitive and that she's a bad child I w- for me what i'm feeling what i'm understanding from this story is that like um, even them have said, is that this is somebody that has not felt like she was a daughter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she has mm-hmm. not felt like she was a daughter for a long for a long time. Yeah, and also let's even remove how you think that oh you should feel empathy and all of those. I think you feel empathy more when you are old and you are able to understand stuff. Yes, but she, she said so have, over time. The daughter she, is. Six feet under, like she said, she emphasized. Mm, is the that way is so, the, that is the, the, it's in the writing. It's in the writing. No? So here's the thing. Here's the that's thing. That's the insensitive part. Here's the me. thing. I agree that there's there's a there's a level of insensitivity, but you cannot blame her for being desensitized. 
because mm. to be honest, over time she hasn't she has felt less and less a part of the, of family, the family. To the point where she no longer feels like she's a part of the family. Mm. So what I'm saying is, the way that you feel bad if someone that you know loses someone, mm. this guy ah this person has lost a child, yeah, that's tough. Oh. That's 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 basically where she is. Mm. It's different from if you feel like ah I've lost someone. The levels are way different, way way different. So there's that. Mm. There's also the fact that she's young. She's 19. Give it time, right? When she goes out into the world and starts to understand a bit more about adulting. And, and all ooh, of that, ooh, when she marries when and she has, has her own child, child. There are certain realizations that we hit her and she would need, she would now start to see things a little bit more from the perspective that her parents had. Mm. They would now be able to meet there will now be middle ground for them to reconcile. And Give it time. If her parents continue to try. Yeah. No, I, I believe that they will. If, yes, if they do. Because if they're in a situation where the parents feel entitled, mm. entitled to mm. time mm. and that they don't come from oh, the no, no, no. Of, yeah. we have done something yeah. wrong and we want to fix it. Do you understand? Because I, agree. I also feel like one of the things I picked up from when you were reading it was also where she said two weeks after the death, they now want her back. So most as if Okay, this one is now gone, so yeah, replacement. Mm. So it's I feel like from a child's point of view, like you feel like so let's say that this my sister continued to be sick, mm. you would never have wanted me. So it's not as if yeah. at some point during the sister's sickness they realized they reached out on the... another child, let's reach out, let's start fixing. The fixing started after after the facts. Mm. So I feel like there's also that um, so, so what I wanted to say, I wanted to ask is okay. We've all dissected what she has said. Mm-hmm. Is she the asshole? Do we? Do you want to take a I was vote? Still, I, was still on, I was still on the fence. So, aha. Uh-huh. Okay. So, why? Yeah. No. From what you guys have said, I mm-hmm. can understand from mm-hmm. her own perspective. Okay, I was only looking at it one dimensionally, mm-hmm. like just as a human. Like, oh, fair. someone died, and you are referring to that. Mm-hmm. Like, but then looking at her own journey. It makes sense. It makes that, sense. Yeah. Okay. So, but again, she gets to realize at the end later. Yeah. 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 So, um, Didi, do Me? you think she's the asshole? No, she's not the asshole. I think okay. she's. Ang- I think like using the word six feet under is anger. Yeah. Like it's anger filled with so many things that have happened that she will use that word oh six feet under because the person is dead. Mm. The person is the fact. Mm. The person has died. Yeah. And that's where he came for her. So I don't think she's the asshole. I also don't think. I think the parents made mistakes, mm-hmm. but I don't think that they were assholes. Because at least what they did was to take her to her grandparents. That's if they abandoned her. Mm, or just that neglected her at home. Somebody else who, was, who they felt would we'll show take her care. Love, love and everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's about, like okay. you said, when they figure it out. Mm. So I don't you? Think so. What do you think? Is she the asshole? No, I don't think she's the asshole. I just think that she's still young mm. and she would grow up eventually and realize that what she said was hurtful and... And just basically hurtful. And I also think that she would un- when she has her own kids, she will understand what her parents were going through. Mm. But I also feel at the same time that her parents should have been there for her. They should have communicated more. Yeah, they would have they should have communicated more and they should have been there for her. Even if yes, they gave them they put her in the care of their grandpa of the grandparents who would love her the same way that the parents love her. But it's nothing compared to the love of your father and your mother, the people who gave you life. So yeah. Okay. So I don't think she's an asshole. Um, I do not think her parents are assholes either. It was the family just went through a very traumatic thing in, and they didn't particularly mistakes were made. It's it happened. Life is tough. Yeah. So okay. So okay. So no, no, no. Please, please. Do we have time to? No, no, no. Just one people is the people that are sending her text messages and. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay. Please, when you watch this, um, tell us in the comment section, what you, section if, what you think. Thank you. Okay, so. Next story. Am I the asshole for refusing to give my parents money? Hmm. I'm a 19-year-old female with six older siblings. My parents, wait, sorry, six older, six. My parents spent most of my childhood spending money they didn't have on my siblings. So by the time I hit my teenage years, I realized I was probably going to have to fend for myself financially when I turned 18. I started babysitting and doing odd jobs around my neighborhood when I was 14 and eventually got part-time jobs during the school year. 
by the time I was 16, I was working three jobs in the summer and two in addition to school. Wow. 16. When my parents told me they couldn't pay for college, I already earned, I had already earned enough along with scholarships to be able to put myself through college and have plenty left over. I've continued to work during the school school year and have been able to make even more money during quarantine by tutoring online. The issue began a few months ago when my eldest sister, 29, female, got married. My parents spent 30 grand on her wedding, mm-hmm. taking out a second mortgage to do so. To make matters worse, my dad was followed, oh, wow, six days, so basically he was let go from work, six days after the wedding. <laughs> they had effectively dug themselves into a hole they couldn't get out of. Two weeks ago, my mom texted me for the first time since the wedding. She didn't say hi, ask how I was, or make any small talk. She just said, your dad and I need a favor. When can we call you? I had expected this. None of my elder siblings were doing well financially, and they've exhausted all their loan options, both from the family and the bank. I forgot that they would text me, ask me to loan them them a few thousand, and promise to pay it back when they could figure things out. I was absolutely willing to pitch in a few thousand and had even considered giving them some of my tutoring jobs so that they could make some extra cash. I was not, however, expecting them to demand I give them all the money, (laughs) not loan, give, all the money close to $40,000 I'd made from the ages of 14 to 18. (laughs) The exact statement my mom made was, you made that money, whoa! You made that money under our roof. We were the ones who allowed you to work so you could have it because of us anyway. We bought you food and clothes for 18 years. The money is only fra the money is only a fraction of what you owe us. Wow. And so on. So wait, owe us. Yes. (laughs) Now wait, wait, wait. I said that food, clothes, and shelter. I said that food, clothes, and shelter were the very minimum. It's what they signed up for when they chose to become parents. I didn't ask for any of it and so on and so forth. They responded by telling me that if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have the life I have today. They said they were, I said they were being ridiculous and I hung up. Since that day, both along with, with two of my siblings have continuously hounded me about giving them what is rightfully theirs. My siblings who have never been asked to give them money are still professing that it's my job as their kid to take care of them. I told them they wouldn't see a cent of my hard-earned money and have no right to make such a request. I am torn. I feel awful for refusing to help them out, but on the other hand, this was their fault. I feel I shouldn't be responsible for fixing their mess. Am I the asshole? No. no. At all. <laughs> no. He Is he a he or a she? She. 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 She's not the asshole at oh. all. Like, you brought me into this world to take care of me. Mm-hmm. Why will I come and start taking care of you? Where you have two legs and two hands. So this person at this point of writing is 19 years old, Mm -hmm. right? And she's the youngest. She has six six older siblings and her parents lived above their means. So they made financial decisions that were unwise. They lived above their means for years so that by the time she got to her teenage years, she just gave herself brain and said, you know what? Mm. You know, the money will remain so I'm not going to reach me. And true to type, by the time she was about to go into college, they told her point blank, we cannot afford to pay for it. So the money that she has saved since she was 14 is what she's using to put herself through school. So wait, now that she's... Like, see, wait, is it's that, the is balls it? on her parents as a pair. <laughs> and, and her siblings. siblings. No, two of her siblings, to be fair. She said only two of her siblings. The others have probably stayed out of it. You understand? How did he stay out of it by getting married and no, 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 the parents like borrowing thirty k? As in, Just why? First of all, <laughs> see, I would never understand why young people. Let me say this. Sorry, younger people, because some people will now say you also feeling like younger people, right? If you're getting married, I beg you. You see that wedding ceremony? It, it's it's it. See, you'd uh, it would be better for you to. You know, do makeup, wear the dress, take pictures, do cute videos, all of that. Do your ceremony, go home. Those memories will always be there. Because you see all that massive something, spending millions, blah, 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 blah. 
the people that you're inviting over to eat and drink and party and all of that, they will remember it only as long as the next party. Do you understand? It is unnecessary. So this one that her parents, and they're not even Nigerian. Imagine if they're Nigerian. Hi, for we. They took out another mortgage to do wedding. On whose house, Pico? On the, that's why they're asking her for money, because now they've entered her and they sack Popsy mm-hmm. shortly after the wedding. You're about to be evicted. Do you understand? So, fam, is red. Like so, yeah, I think this one is pretty straightforward. She, yeah, it she's is. Not yeah, the it asshole. is. She's no. definitely not the asshole. Her parents, unfortunately, uh, uh, I mean... But what if they get evicted, though? And now they're on the streets and you have all the money and you're in New York. Please, they're the parents. They should have made... You can't, you can't be relying on a 19-year-old she's child. 19. She's a child, I beg. Moving on. Also, <laughs> even they, they took... Um, they used taxi grants. Yeah, and she was willing to loan. Yes, they now they, they didn't ask for a loan. No. You guys now, and you know the funny thing. This one is also Ooh. a very, a very Nigerian problem. Mm. Where parents like, you know, there's this assumption again. I'm not a parent. Black tax. Kids. Yes, mm. because that's something a lot of kids have to deal with. Where sometimes you could make a lot more faster progress if you do not have so much to do with. Now I'm not saying you should not take care of your siblings and your parents and everything. You should do that. But it's also really hard when you come from a family that is very entitled mm. to your to your money, to your hard work, to your everything. Like you are their beginning, and they don't even have conscience when they are asking you. They are asking you for big and small things. Mm-hmm. One will now come and say, um, "Okay, there's a story. Let me tell you guys." Where I don't know what I can't remember who told me that story, but she was willing to help her uncle's child go to school. <laughs> <clears throat> and she was going to pay for everything and she was like, oh, like, family, let's mm-hmm. do this. Only for the uncle to bring the child to the house and say, hey, this is the school that they want the child to go. And it's private university. Come on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so Come had, on. They had, yeah, they had choices. <coughs> and they were not like, ah, thank you for wanting to take care of you. Know, but this is the one that we want. Uh, that this is the one they want. They want their covenant university. So that's what they wanted her to pay for. So even as much as this is in Nigeria, so it's a very Nigerian thing. Yeah. There's a tight women. So because again, but how do you navigate? Because I have a question for you guys. Where now you guys are parents, and you guys are somebody's child as mm-hmm, well. Mm-hmm. Where that thin line between I will do anything for my siblings or my parents and all of those things. Mm-hmm. And also remembering to like you're a human being and you have to sometimes make a decision and please, that is selfish. Add this. It, like while in consideration mm-hmm. while you answer mm-hmm. because let's say her name is Chioma now mm-hmm. do you know that if she was like that broke like the the first one that just yeah. got married yeah. they would do the same thing so there's a possibility hanging there that they, these parents if she was like out and dry they will help her just like they help this other person but now she happens to be the one in the place of okay, opportunity okay. if they would help her if if she was broke yeah. Like the first one that they gave thirty yeah. thirty thousand dollars for her wedding. Why are they coming to meet her now that she has no why can't they go and look for how to make that get that money and sort out their mortgage? Why are they relying I'm on her? Trying, but now it just happens to be that they are out and dry and she is the only one that can help. No, let's remember, let's also not forget that they said the girl said that they've been living above their means. Mm-hmm. For years. I don't think they were trying. Sorry, yo, and these are the parents that said, please read that part again. Yeah, they you told them. made this money on under our, our roof. roof. You only made this money because, because we let you to. Do you think those kind of parents are parents that are considerate? Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me say, for example, my mom, I would be hungry mm-hmm. and I would make sure that she eats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But my mom, that, my mom that we gave power bank two days ago, my mother, they pray for one hour. <laughs> <laughs> your children, children will do more for you. <laughs> do you understand? Yeah. So that kind of person you want to do, do more, more for. Yeah. Look at what her parents are saying. You only made this money because we allowed you to. Like they're feeling very entitled and not even wanting loan. They want her to give the forty thousand dollars that she made from. Ah. Ah, man. I don't ah. think. I don't think. I don't know. Uh, uh, it's not my. It's not my problem right now. Not it's not her problem See, right now. Baba. You're looking at it from the POV of the parents. Devil. No, he's advocate. playing devil's advocate because I say I'm yeah, fair, against fair, it. Fair. But like, because because yeah. these parents, if they were good parents, it will reflect in this story. It will reflect in whatever they say. Yeah, and it you doesn't. can tell that they were not. Whoa. So you let them hang. 
Let's just say that. At least she says she feels guilty. That's enough. Yeah, she, a, she, she was bad. willing to loan, loan them, them the money, but they are demanding knowing fully well. Listen, 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 because she gives them all her money. Our we are family, so forget when our siblings or whoever will come and tell us, "Oh, please loan me, loan, loan me this amount of money. I will pay you back." You know, that is not. It's even. not. It's not coming back. But let's just. You, I mean, it happens all the time. The choice of words that they decided to use, you will give us this money. Because we 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 allowed you to we allowed to you to work to make this not like amount. we got you the job not like we we worked for you and helped you save no we allowed you to work so you went and looked for a job you did the work yourself but it's only because they allowed you but you know that it starts off like this but the sixth attempt will be begging why didn't they start with beg first it will get to a point that they <laughs> it's true sure. after so, a while after you don't yeah. you don't do like this do like this and you realize that the child is not budging you don't be like please now. But you know, the, so you, know you know, that one is pretend because yeah. they are just doing it. Just they're that means they're not good people from their heart. I think I don't. I also I actually think they just they did not even think about how how to handle a family or take care of kids because they 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 had everything wrong from the very they beginning. Seven children. seven children. They had um, everything not, wrong. I think they are the types that just wanted to have kids and tell and government would take care of the kids for them because you did not even have family planning or plan your home. Mm. How can you be living above your means in America? If it's dollars, right? Mm. Yeah, it's America. <laughs> How can you be living above your means? You're not taking care of your family. You're not taking care of your kids. Well, you're not even talking to your other kids. Oh, how to get a job? How to be responsible? And then you actually tell her when she gets when she's trying to get into college that you cannot you cannot handle her tuition, so she has to rough it on her own. Uh-uh. That was that was years ago. Before yeah, they now man. came to ask for not give me the money, not loan. Next. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>